Perfect. Welcome, everyone. Appreciate uh, everyone being here. Happy New Year. Hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. I'm super excited today to share it with you. I'll share my screen here. Super excited to do this in regards to um, what to do when you a buyer comes in. Now, guys, we are we are starting kind of in some cases, starting kind of from the beginning. So if there's something that you have heard many times, you think, oh, well, man, this, this Eric's already taught this and I, he taught this, you know, a year and a half ago. Do I really need to come in um, and listen to it again? Uh, there's times when I'm working with Jared James and I go, okay, like his classes this week, I've probably gone through three, three years of listening to that, but it's still important to like, re-listen to it and to re-energize uh, because there'll be some new things that are tweaked inside some of the same old concepts of some new things that uh, we bring to the table. So I wanted to share that with you today in regards to this because you guys, this will probably will look somewhat familiar. I know that um, that Madison wasn't aware of this and I think she's been here four or five months. So uh, so she didn't, uh, didn't remember this. So I'm gonna bring this back up to speed because it will kind of refresh and remind us of just getting back to the basics of having a system in place when a buyer, and today we're talking about buyers of when they come in and say, hey, I'm interested, you know, where, where are you guys getting most of your buyers from? You know, we can chat, you can throw it down, floor time, floor calls. Time. What do you got, Tim? Floor time. Floor time, they're coming in. So you actually I could have somebody that walks in and actually, are we getting a lot of walk-in traffic? Probably not a lot in the winter, but but they're, they do. But uh, walk-in traffic, um, you know, calls, uh, you know, online. So they're finding you uh, in, in, you know, and, and I always think about this, Tim, is that, you know, they might go in, if somebody comes up looking around Grass Valley, they might show up, they might come into your office, they might go into another office, they might go into two or three offices because they might not understand the system that, that all of us have the same houses, all of us have the same MLS, uh, but they still feel like they have to go in and pick up a brochure that's outside on the box or pick up something to come in to get brochures so they can kind of drive around or get the free map and, you know, and, and kind of do their thing. So you guys need to step away and step out and look different, feel different, be different and show why you're different. And so, and express to them. Many times I'll tell a buyer, hey, thank you so much for sharing this with you. Thank you so much for coming into the office and just stepping in and, and, and coming in and wanting to, you know, us to provide some information for you, but just let you know that we all have the same MLS. So, you know, you've got 10 other offices that are local here in the county and feel free. I'd love to be the agent of choice. There's no need for you to go into another office. There's no need to actually share all this again when you actually find another home on Zillow and why call that listing agent or why hit the little blue button that doesn't really even go to the, the listing agent because it just comes and gets routed to a bunch of different agents. Why start over the conversation again and share your whole life story and then have to start over and get the same listings getting sent to you. So it's part of education educating them that they don't have to. I loved it this week where I had two people that called and said, hey, can you just set me up on a drip? It's like, oh, well, you guys are obviously um, you know, not new beginners. And then I had two, two sellers that called this week that says, yeah, I've never sold a house before. I have no idea what I would even be doing to sell a house. So you need to know that uh, up front of, hey, is this your first home? Or, or you know, how, how experienced are you? What do you know about the systems and things of that nature? So those who have heard the LP mama, um, there it is. Uh, you know, so feel free to teach. I think it's probably been about a year since we've actually taught this one. So I want to share kind of what what this means. Uh, there's been, um, and I think I've shared this before, that I've, I've seen some new agents when I owned the company and they would come in and they would get all excited. They walk over to me and they go, hey, some walk-in just came in, blah, blah, blah. I got this. I got this. I said, well, did you get their phone number? Did you get their email? Or did you get their contact information? And some, you know, they go, oops, sorry, I kind of forgot to, to get some of that. So this kind of really helps kind of understand kind of what it is. So if you're new, you know, seasoned, whatever it is, some buyer calls, I would immediately take a piece of paper and I'd go, LP mama, don't say it out loud because that might be a little bit strange, but put LP mama and then just start asking these questions as you kind of go through um, when, you, when you actually visit with them. So the first one here, we will get it to run. All right, not moving.
Interesting. Um, may have to uh, just go with that one if it's not going to slide show. Well, we'll just go with that. Uh, boom. All right, so slideshow. We'll just go with that. You guys can see the screen. Yes. All right, perfect. All right, we'll just kind of. I'll let you see them all. I was going to have them slide in. Uh, all right, location. So the very first thing that people you know call up and they say, let's. I'll use Christine for example. Um, she's down here at Lake of the Pines, and somebody calls on a house. They're calling about a house in Auburn, and they it's on Torrey Pines. It's like the biggest one. Tim, you've got you know Lake Wildwood Drive, whatever it is. They'll call on these homes and they have no idea where Torrey Pines is. But Christine knows that Torrey Pines is in Lake of the Pines. And so she's sitting there chatting with them a little bit, asking them questions, you know, what brings you to, you know, the Auburn area and stuff. Have you been to Auburn area? So I like to pin down in location down to, have you ever been to Auburn before? Oh yeah, we've gone through Auburn all the time. There's that Ikea's or there's a couple of places that we stop and we get some, uh, some hamburgers and stuff that most people do stop through as they come through Auburn. That's great. Are you familiar with Lake of the Pines? No, I never heard of Lake of Pines before. Where's that located at? Well, the house that you happen to be calling on, because Auburn is a huge area, and Auburn actually consists all the way up to a gated community called Lake of the Pines, is where Torrey Pines home is. Well, tell me a little bit more about that one. So then you actually can pivot and share information. If I go, well, have you ever been to Auburn before? Oh, yeah, we absolutely you know love Auburn. It's great. And hey, have you been to Torrey Pines, you know, Lake of the Pines before? Oh, yeah, we love Lake of the Pines. Da, da, da. So you're familiar with the street Torrey Pines, which goes all the way around the lake. Oh, yes, totally been on that street many times. So you see where I just pinpointed and lowered and shrunk my conversation of what I need to educate them for when they actually tell me kind of where they're at with their location or understanding of where their location is. So if they've never heard of Torrey Pines, never heard of Lake of the Pines, I'm spending a few minutes on sharing that with them because guess what's going to happen they're either going to say i hate hoas i totally mm -hmm. don't want that or that sounds wonderful to me and if they say hey i'm not really into hoas and i don't really want to be in one and that's the only house they called on then you're going to pivot and say well what other areas that you like and what other parts of auburn do you like do you want you know i bring up like airport location of how far do you want to be from the airport where what brings you here well my job well, where are you going to be working well i'll be working in roseville well how far do you want the commute to be between roseville and auburn and if they say I want a 30 minute commute. Lake of the Pines is probably pushing it a little bit. So I kind of want to like educate them a little bit about that. So I don't just jump in the car, meet them at the office, show them Lake of the Pines and they go, wow, I didn't know this is a gated community. This is crazy. What's the HOA? And I tell them, well, it's, you know, I think it just went up to 261 and they go, I'm not paying that. So I'm out. And then I just spent, you know, some time there that probably could have been best used to go in a different direction or discuss a little bit more. So location is something I want to get to know them a little bit about how well they know the location of the home that they're actually calling on. Because you're going to get people who, like I have somebody coming tomorrow to look at houses who has never been to Grass Valley, Nevada City, who's never been, you know, even around this area. And it's like, well, why are you choosing this area? And sometimes people will say it could be by price, uh, more affordable. Uh, some people could say it just seems like a really fun place to be. So I'm going to be a tour guide for, you know, two, three hours of showing some properties where they may not even like Grass Valley. They may drive up the Highway 49 and say, this is just way too far. Luckily for her, she actually, um, or for me, I guess, she actually looked up Forest Hill because we were going to look at one in Forest Hill and one up in Grass Valley. And she thought that Forest Hill was a little bit too far out. But technically going from Auburn to Forest Hill is way faster and way shorter than going from Auburn all the way up to Nevada City. So there's some education kind of stuff on location there. So let's say that um, Jana gets a phone call about this Torrey Pines property and she says, you know, starts talking about that it's like 499 is what this house is in Lake of the Pines. Now Jana is totally familiar that there's uh, five houses now in, on the market in Lake of the Pines and it's 499. So Jana immediately knows, wow, this is actually one of the least expensive houses in Lake of the Pines. So they might, so I want to know a little bit about their price range. And I want to know, you know, or have, you know, what, what price range are you in? I spent probably 20 minutes on a phone call the other day and she called in a $575,000 house. And she goes, well, my price range is 500 and below. Do you see something a little bit weird on that? It's like, well, wait, you just call in a 575. Do you, are you, do I need to educate you that you're not going to get them to come down to $500,000 on where the seller market is? Or why did we call on that house? So 
I want to discuss a little bit with them in regards to uh, price, uh, what they feel comfortable with, uh, which is going to lead right into the mortgage conversation right behind it. But just want to know, well, what do you feel comfortable with? If they tell me that they feel like they're comfortable with a, a, a $2,000 a month payment and they're on a $575,000 home and Jana goes, well, what type of down payment are you coming up with? Well, I have zero down or I have five percent down and you're all of a sudden your brain started going well wait that's like a $3,500 a month payment so with taxes and insurance so there's some education so you want to just kind of discuss with them a little bit so I want to know kind of what price range so if they called and there's other times it goes completely backwards where they'll tell me yeah I want to stay around the 250 to 300 and I'm kind of thinking wow we don't even have things that are around down that price point and then I have to educate them and say yeah that's gonna be a little bit tight and he goes well I really can't afford up to 450 but I was hoping to get around so then see they just shared with me that they could do that. So it actually goes backwards and goes the other direction, or I guess this case forward and better on that one. So you want to know about the price range and where their structure is and where their comfort level is and stuff on that. So I'm talking about price range. So then I'm jotting these down on my notes. And, and you can see that when I, I put them down, I had one the other day that was like right here. So I'm like talking to them. And I, I would encourage you, I started up a brand new 2022 book. So that way it would be easy for me. So I could just start nice and fresh, but I put like all the person's information, everything, what she was actually sharing with me. And if they say something like, I'm going, I'm moving closer to my grandkids that live in Lake of the Pines or Lake Wildwood or Grass Valley. I'm working in Roseville. I've you know, I've got dogs, I've got this, I'm jotting all this stuff down. So then, uh, then like the other day, somebody told me I was going to be having a little bit of a surgery. So I emailed him yesterday and says, how, how did your surgery go? Cause I knew it was going to be happening. And he was just, well, that's so kind of you to even ask. So you're listening and getting additional other things to like blend and actually build that rapport with them a little bit more. So M here, uh, you can put motivation or mortgage in either of the two M's. I just think it fits really nice with the price range as I'm coming through, discussing about prices. And then I share with them and say, well, have you sat down and, and talked to a lender yet? And they go, oh yeah, I've got a couple of lenders and, you know, or no, I haven't. I'm just in the beginning stages. And I will share with you, I have a, a really nice couple that are coming to look at homes. Uh, they reached out to me on Yelp, I think Monday, um, super nice. And I could tell by when they were telling me they were in the 300 to $400,000 range, not a lot of inventory in there, first time home buyers. I just felt that I needed to put them in front of a lender before I went out and spent two, three, four hours driving around. And then all of a sudden, boom, their credit was bad or something was bad because they were brand new buyers don't really have never gone through this situation, don't even know their credit score. So guys, we're busy. You know, I you need to build that rapport. I always give that one free ride in my car or actually that's way pre-COVID. So I haven't really done that in a long time, but I would generally spend that one free moment to give them an opportunity to, to build a relationship because you still need to build that relationship because you'll get some people that will be two years later, they'll call you and go, hey, just checking in with you. And I just see this one house just popped up. I'm still interested in, in looking at real estate. And so like, can I come see the home? And I go, oh, thanks so much for thinking of me. And so some of the people get really lucky because you haven't really contacted or dripped them much. And some people you've been working really hard and then they'll, they'll reach back out to you. So you want to be that connection here. So I talk about the mortgage. We talk about um, interest rates a little bit. Um, I, again, don't, uh, if they have some non-local person that they're discussing or somebody online, I'd say, you know what, I would just really encourage you to find somebody here locally as well that understands um, perk and mantles if we're discussing privacy and land or wells, uh, certainly feel free. I never would like you not to want to talk to your lender. So I want you to talk to your lender, but I'd also love to refer someone else. So you actually can actually then compare the two and to be able to feel comfortable with your rate and be able to know that, hey, if there was a problem that you could sit down face to face with somebody here locally and say, hey, let me know what's going on. I have some issues and some concerns versus maybe calling a calling center and just getting uh, an online service that now you don't really know who you're talking to. And, and, and so it real, they kind of understand. And so I'm just educating them and being the educator. But if they tell me that they're totally pre-approved, they tell me, oh, yep, I'm pre-approved. I'll send you my letter today. I've had um, one, pe one person that did that so far that we're showing another home today that it was a wonderful. That's like if she's already showing me and talking to the lender and already sending me a pre-approval letter, 
that helps me with the second M. I know the motivation is stronger. If somebody says we're just in the looky lose, we're not in a huge hurry and we might be buying maybe in the next year or two, they already answered my M down there on my motivation. So I'm already jotting that note down about, hey guys, this is a long-term person. I know that we're always, you know, in, in, in our business, we want to earn money and we want, you know, would love to earn the fast money and actually sell a property today and, and get paid in 20 or 30 days, which is great. But if you don't put these other individuals in your pipeline that are the six months, the three months, the five months. And so I'll ask them when I get down to the motivation, which we'll get there, I'll, I'll ask them, I'll say, what is your motivation? If they talk about family and people here, you have a good 75% chance they're moving here if they have family members that live here in this local area. Or if you have a 100% chance, well, I shouldn't say 100 because it never is, but a 99% chance that if they're actually moving here because of a job, then you know that, um, that they're definitely motivated. And so, um, and so then I go a little bit about the mortgage and I talk about agent relationships. And I think this is important because there are times where I've actually have shared and asked this question, showed up at the house, 20, 30 minute drive down there. And they say, yeah, my, and they, this lady said, my husband is a real estate agent. And I even specifically asked, do you have a relationship? Now, I don't know what the relationship between a husband and a wife are, or what that counts as a real estate agent or a spouse, but I was just so internally livid. <laughs> and I was not trying to share that with her, but I was like, I asked you if you had a relationship with an agent and you said, no, then I get there and your husband is an agent. I was like in the, from the Bay area, it was like, it blew me away. I was like, I almost just wanted to say, hmm, I probably did say slightly, uh, you know, so how was that when I asked that question and you didn't have an agent, it was the weirdest thing. She absolutely totally used me. Wasn't really wanting to communicate with me going through the house really wasn't discussing, giving me short yes and no answers to my questions. And I could tell right there. And it was a waste of 30 minutes. And that was like 10 years ago. And I still remember it today. And so these are times where you just feel like, you, none of us want to go and spend two, three days looking at houses, and then they end up not even buying in the local area, or just putting things completely on hold. I've already had two people which that this week from my emails that already said, we're putting things on hold for 2022. That doesn't mean they won't come back, but at least now I know that I'm not going to spend a lot of time and in, in my time assisting and helping them. I'm going to put them on a different drip versus the people that say, you know what, here's my pre-approval letter and, and let's go buy a house. And that's the people that I'm going to be calling and talking to like every day until we find some property for them. So I want to know about their agent relationships because I don't want to go drive over, spend a, you know, go show them a home. And then they go, yeah, my aunt, my uncle, uh, my husband is a real estate agent. And thank you so much for showing it to me because again they don't understand they think sometimes when they're calling online they feel that you're the listing agent and then you should be and that's your job to show people the property um i'm not a big fan when all of a sudden somebody calls me and goes well my i didn't i didn't want to bother my agent you know yes i have a relationship but i didn't want to bother him it's saturday and i just cringe and i just go so you want to bother me to go show you that house that um, that you want me to spend my Saturday, but you don't want to waste their time. So I actually educate them a little bit and say, look, here's the deal. If my, um, so here's somebody who's calling right now that I haven't spoken to for a year, and they're probably going to say, let's list my house because, uh, but they're on my drip list. So there you go. So that's actually good. We should just open that straight up, but just call live right now. But that's somebody who's been on my drip for a little bit in a little while. Um, so, you know, you just want to talk about that agent relationship and just educate them and let them know and say, look, if I had a client that you called that, that, that you and I were working together, that we've sold homes in the past and you call up another real estate agent, I'd be like kind of hurt and crushed a little bit because like, don't reach out. That's my job. I would want you guys to reach out to me. I would want my clients to reach out to me in the middle of the night on a Saturday night if they had a question about real estate, because that's what we're here for. So I would just politely say, look, give that agent a call, um, you know, let them know that, that I, sometimes I say, let them know, Eric just said, you know, no, you know, you can't, can't, I'm not gonna do that. Now, sometimes they'll all of a sudden in those conversations will go, well, I'm not really in a relationship with them. They're just, they've showed me some homes before, but I'm really open to working with other people. And you're just like, okay, wait, you know, like, where are we going down this road? You know, but then, then you say, look, I'd be happy to do this, but I'm going to send you a piece of paper that you're going to be signing with me, that you're going to be, you know, working with me permanently uh, as a buyer, buyer broker agreement. 
And then, you know, and sometimes they've actually said, great, send it over and show me the house. You know, usually when those type of people are so antsy and anxious to see a home, my experience is it doesn't really work out. When they're like demanding that they see me in five minutes of the house, generally it just doesn't work out. Did one the other day, uh, even though, now was my listing and it was just right over here in the ranchos. Obviously I have a duty to my, my seller that they couldn't get a hold of their agent. I'm certainly gonna drive over and open a house you know, for them. Then I'm gonna call the agent and say, hey, Jane, I just want you to know that um, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer just contacted me and they said they couldn't get a hold of you, but I just showed them you know, Timber Ridge. If you have any other additional questions on that, feel free to reach out. And it's a nice courtesy thing. There's um, an agent that just recently retired from our office that I had you know, before you know, years ago, I just you know, called her up. This is before she even moved to it was Century 21. And I just said, you know, you just want you to know that so and so just called me and they are, um, you know, looking at homes. And I told them to give you a call because they're, you know, they're, they said they're, that they have a relationship with you for, you know, many years, but haven't spoken to you for a while. But I just wanted you to know. And that agent called me back and said, Eric, I just want you to know that, that, that you're so much different. No one does that. Thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. She closed the house and guess what? You know, two, three years later, she ends up moving here to Century 21 and now hence is retired. But, but it was just, you just want to be that good person. You don't want to be the person that just goes and steps on them and goes, yep, I'll show you the property and you have to work with me kind of person. Uh, so I always, it's too small of a community. It really is. So I want to know for my time, their time, the other agent's time, you know, do you have a relationship? You know, do, do you have an agent relationship? Do you have an agent that is sending you homes currently right now in, um, in Nevada County, Placer County? And you want to ask those questions says, well, and if they just tell me, says, well, you know, I, you know, showed property from in this lady I'm showing again today, um, this is going to freak you out. But she basically just said, look, um, I showed property with a different person about two months ago or went out and she showed me some properties, but I just didn't feel like there was a connection there. Um, she doesn't do DocuSign and my wife was in the car and my wife busts up laughing and I'm, I'm on speakerphone. I'm all, well, thanks, honey. I appreciate the <laughs> bust up laughing on my passenger here as I'm on a serious call. Uh, which was hilarious, but you know, it was where this agent didn't do DocuSign, didn't have like, you know, the technology. And, and so my, and my ladies from the Bay Area thinking, how am I going to work with this person who doesn't even do video, doesn't even go in and actually share and won't jump into a home. And so yesterday or you no, know, two days ago, Wednesday, I, you know, within, she calls me, I'm in Grass Valley. She goes, another home just came up on the market. Can you do a video tour? I was in that house 20 minutes later doing a video tour, sending her videos. And she says, that's why that you're different than most agents. And so these are things that uh, it was just good timing for me on that one. But it was at the same time, you just want to set yourself apart and just do the things. And then I told the lady, do you know that they actually get a free version of DocuSign, I believe, through the MLS? Because she told my lady it was too expensive for her to have DocuSign. So anyway, that was another story. So the agent relationship. Go into the motivation. We touched this a little bit about that. It's just say when, you know, thank you. And I always like to call them by name. Jana, thanks for calling. So, you know, Jana, what, and I don't just sit there and go down, you know, location, price, mortgage. You can kind of get a feel that, you know, I'm having inner conversations and small little ones about how things are going. And I, so you don't sound like you're a telemarketer going, well, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this. Uh, and I even did it yesterday when another gal called and I said, just why don't you go ahead and just paint the perfect picture of the house that you're looking for? And I sit and listen. I sit and take notes. They tell me about, I want a little privacy. They tell me about, I have dogs. They tell me about this. They tell me about that. I need to be here. I need to be there. And they're answering some of these questions as I'm going through. Didn't even really have to even drop down the LP mom on a piece of paper because you just get it so in your head and it's just consistently, I'm asking the same questions. I want to know where I'm am at. And then that motivation and you discuss it a little bit. Um, I'm not a big fan of people who say, you know, I'm not in a huge hurry and I, it might be a year or two. That's great. You know, I'd love to make money sooner, but you got to put them in. You got to take care of them. And you just you just have to because they will like this phone call that just was coming through that. There they are. They're going to contact you in the future. One of the biggest things that I see the biggest problems here that agents have uh, is you get all through this. You you're going to say you're going to do all this stuff and you go, great. Let me send you some home right now. I'll follow up. All of us on this this Zoom call here have seen this happen before where you talk to somebody it seems like it's going to be the most perfect buyer 
they've come into whatever Timberwoods, Christine, they're excited. And then you just never hear from them again. Like what happened? And most of the time, probably what happened is either they were just really not super interested or they went and found some other agent that was, um, you know, guys, they're in each of the offices and, and I hope that they're still being created, but there's a, if they walk into your office, there's these folders that we created years ago that have some information about the area, have some information about you and you take a few of those and you, you customize those to put a little more information about you. Why choose you? Uh, social proof is so huge. Get the piece of paper. Do you have that program or not? Or that print out you probably don't it's probably in the getting cooled off but there's like i have a whole full-on zill if you go to the um go to the cloud cma that they you can actually get it printed right there or go to zillow put you'll know, copy and paste some good good reviews realtor.com whatever you want to do yelp and you can create your own page and then you just need to stand out and say this is why you need to choose me um and so but what people forget to do they get so excited about everything get so excited about this they skip the last letter and the last letter is appointment and I've seen it happen before. I get off the phone and I go, man, I didn't even ask when they're coming. And this is how you do it. You just say, well, thank you so much, uh, Lisa. I look forward to it. When would you like to go or when do you plan on coming back to Grass Valley to look at homes? And she said, I plan on coming in two days. Now, if I just got off the phone and just said, let me send you some homes. And then I called her the next day. I called her the next day. I called her the following day and I didn't get a hold of her. She may have jumped off the phone, found another home on Zillow, called over into that agent, and that agent said one simple thing. When would you like to see it? And Lisa would have said, well, I'm coming tomorrow. You know, then they go, great. And if they book that appointment, and then I call the next day, and it happens all the time, and I call the next day and I go, hey, just want to let you know that, um, you know, that house is available. When would you like to see it? Uh, you know, I already called the listing agent direct, or I already called this person. I had them on the hook before and I lost them because I did not ask, when are you coming and when do you want to come? If somebody says, yep, I'm coming. I had two people that said in the beginning of December, when I asked that, because I think we're thinking about coming in um, December 22nd to 23rd. Great. I put that on the calendar. I call them. Are you coming? Boom. There they were. If I had not have done that, I wouldn't have been the agent. They already kind of soft committed that they were going to meet with me on those days. And so you have to do that. We just closed a house on the 30th of the month. That was just like that. She was just calling around, looking at agents. She had probably had gone and looked at several other things, said didn't have a relationship because nobody stuck with her. But at the same time, she she no one really you know, said, would you like to come look or let's, let's look. So you got to get that appointment guys. So that, that is crucial. So I get the appointment. They say, they might tell you, yeah, we don't really have a set time. Then I'm going to share with them. Okay. This is what's going to happen next. And you have to share what's going to happen next and say, look, I'm going to, and then you know, when you say CRM or something, they have no idea what a CRM is. You just say, I'm going to put you into my system that I'm going to send you some homes from the description that you just shared with me about a three bedroom, two bath, 1500 square foot fenced yard, not too far out from the city. You work at home. So I need to find out the internet. And so I just kind of discuss that again. And then they just subconsciously think, wow, he just listened to me. That was so, so fantastic. So I say, I'm going to send you these homes and I'm going to check in with you tomorrow to make sure that we're on the same page, that the homes that I'm sending you are fit the criteria. Will that work for you? And when is a good time to call you? I never leave that appointment without getting some kind of new task or some kind of new uh, uh, time frame that I'm going to reach out and contact with them. And they go, great. I get off work tomorrow at 430. Well, give me a call anytime after that. Perfect. So then I'll call them and say, this is Eric Catch, as promised, I'm calling you just to check, did you get the homes that you received? The other day, the lady had an AOL you know, email address and I called, I go, did you get the homes? No, they're not coming through. Did you get the homes? I says, we got to get off the AOL. I don't know what happened, but we ended up having to go through a whole different way, get the husband's email, but just because I don't want them to not get them. And they're going, well, he never listened or she never is listening to me. So you just need to let them know I'm putting you in my system. I'm going to send you some drip alerts that are going to come to you automatically. And I'll say to you, I'll say, hey, Christine, I just want you to know that there's going to be a group 
because in your price range, if they tell me it's 400 and under, I'm gonna say there's probably gonna be a small handful. If they say 500 to 900, I'm gonna say there's probably gonna be you know 15 to 20 homes currently right now that I'm gonna send you in that first email. And what I want you to do is I want you to go in there and I want you to heart or like the ones that you really like, which is gonna help me understand, Christine, what homes that you like. So then when you come on the 21st of December, then I know which ones that you're ready to come to, come to see and wanna see. Will that work for you? Get the buy-in. Yes, I will. that works totally good for me. So I let them know that. So I tell them that then what's going to happen after the group of the 15 or 14, anything that new pops on the market could be one, could be two at a time. You're going to get in another email for me. So don't be overwhelmed when you get the first 15 because that's a lot of homes to kind of look at. Just you can erase the ones you don't like, heart the ones that you do like, and that kind of helps me understand kind of what it is. So that's the next step. And I'm going to call you tomorrow as, as promised at 4.30 just to check to make sure that we're on the same page with the quality of homes. Will that work? Yes. So you guys have to put them in there. Um, you know, and it just, you, you you just have to, you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's putting them in there. I'm, I'm again, I love new beginnings. I love the new year because you can just kind of start over and you just go, I'm going to be so much better. I'm going to be so much better on my taxes. I'm going to be so much better on my, my, my write-offs and my keeping my receipts and everything. Cause when you get to about September, it just, you get lazy. So you just need to make sure that you just start fresh and start new, stick them in there. And then when you put them in there that you need to make sure that you, I uh, put a task and call them and say, I'm calling you tomorrow at 430. And then when you call them tomorrow at 430, have another task. I'm calling you next week. I'm going to call, you know, and just you keep keep going. Um, and then something important, too, is that, you know, Tim, you know, they they call Tim. They never met Tim. They never seen Tim. They just to talk to Tim. Tim's got a really cool telephone voice. Sounds like a really nice guy, um, but sending them a welcome video. And I also tell my clients, look, I'm going to send you the links. And then I'm also going to send you a video email introducing myself. So when we meet, you know who you're meeting with. And so I'll just send this video email. Thank you so much for finding this online. Thank you so much for whatever it is. I appreciate the opportunity. Just want to put a face to a name. And then I look forward to working with you in the future. Uh, feel free. And this is where I share with them again. And I might have done this in the phone conversation too. If you don't see a, if you see another house that is not on the list that I provided for you, I need you to call me or text me. Please do not text the listing agent. This is a working relationship. I'm committing to you. Let me know which house it is, and I'm happy to, you know, to research it because sometimes the house may be on a Zillow, maybe a for sale by owner, maybe in some other type of platform that may or may not be on the MLS. And I'm here to help and assist you on that. So feel free to come come do that. So sending this video email, there's things that you want to have in that video email. You want to have, you know, the again some social proof of a link. Say, guys, right down below here, just want to share with you. Also, there's some links of some Zillow. There's a Why Choose Me video. There's a there's some other videos of some uh, stuff that I can do. There's some helpful, I don't care if you guys go get all sorts of, you know, find a blog that or write one that says 15 wonderful things to do in Nevada County, or, you know, find some little thing you could say the union newspaper link or, you know, anything that just kind of gives them something else or some other additional information. If they talk about schools, if they told me that their schools are so important to them, do you know what I'm going to be putting in that video email? I'm going to be sharing them. It says, hey, I just know you mentioned about schools. Here's a link to all the local schools and all the, the, the um, you know, scores and different things that you're welcome to actually kind of watch and review. That stuff goes a long ways because they thought, wow, Jaina listened to me. Wow, that's awesome. That's so good. Now I don't have to go search that. This is a resource. I need to hang on to Jaina because she's going to be the woman that I need to actually buy my next house with. So that video email is really crucial. Set them up on a drip. You know, you got to do it the, the same day, like right away and always enter another task right behind that task, because if you don't, you're going to you're going you're gonna to mess up and then you, and you're going to forget about them. And then you want to do that follow a call and you just want to keep following. Uh, and then I then I always do a create a buyer CMA when they come. I got uh, two days ago. It sets you apart. Um, you know, I used to just just take an MLS piece of paper and I might do this on the, the second or third showings. If we're just looking at onesie twosies, I may not put a whole entire another binder together behind plastic. But the other day, this Lisa buyer says, Eric, that she looked at that and went, 
that's impressive. She looked, just looked at me right in my eyes. I've, I've bought a lot of homes before and no one's ever given me something like that. It was impressive. And it takes three to five minutes on Cloud CMA just to try to create a little buyer tour, put them in order, tell them that's the order that you're going to be meeting and you'll meet them at that house. They can write notes. I love it when I sit there and they're sitting at the houses, writing notes and things. And they're checking things off, looking at the schools, looking at the local restaurants. It's just a really nice kind of fun thing. So guys, that... Um, is what you need to do when a buyer. So when we get our new buyers um, that are that are coming through, uh, that's that's what we got to do. You know, you, we got to just you know take it to the house and work with them and keep dripping them and keep working with them. And again, you will find that some of the buyers that just say, you know what, I'm not buying there anymore. Thank you so much for sharing you know and showing with me. And I would just tell you, I've done this before. I said, do you mind if I send you a Yelp review? And then that way you can at least put some kind of comment on there about our relationship or what we had done before. It would really help me for the time that I spent with you. It was a guilt trip, right? From the time I spent with you, you know, that was, it was wonderful. So they don't always do it. I would probably, I need to be better to send them the second link and do it maybe two or three times to remind them that they're supposed to, but you'll be, you know, I probably have a half a dozen leads that I've never sold houses to, but they put some nice verbiage on it, on a Yelp, which just helps build your, um, you know, your, your online presence. All right. Any questions that you guys have on that? I know I spoke a long time here, like 40 straight minutes, but uh, anything that you guys have a questions on a buyer or anything that you guys have done that uh, have worked well for you on uh, closing the deal? You know, I will second your notion. The buyer tour um, pamphlet is, I've gotten great feedback on that. Good. And you'll know, give them something, other things that, that are set you apart. So make sure you're giving them other little something, add a little buyer book that you guys can provide them. So then, you know, put it in a folder. I think Century 21, we have the free folders here or stick it in the plaster title or some other folder for you. But uh, thank you, Tim. Any other comments, guys, that you guys have something that's worked for you? Nope. All right. So no hands are raising. So thank you guys so very much for, um, uh, listening to this this training, uh, and again, you know that I'm, I'm, I think maybe a couple of you were on the LP Mama training before, uh, but but still, it's it's good to listen to it again. So feel free if there's things that you guys want to learn or do uh, in the you know for next Friday, just let me know. And then, but we're just going to kind of go back to that sections and start just going back to some basics and going and and kind of starting and doing the training and and starting over with a fresh new year, with some new ideas. All right, guys. Thank you very much. And you guys have a wonderful blast uh, today and, and go out and sell something during the weekend. Thank you, Eric. You're welcome. Eric. Yes.